Some, uh, really good things. We uh, need to make a great emphasis of having a great week of practice. We're playing uh, one of the better teams, in my opinion, in, um, in the uh, Mid-American Conference. I think uh, uh, they're extremely well coached. My hat's off to uh, uh, Thomas. Thomas is a great guy, great coach. He's built a great program. He's built it on the right stuff, very similar to what we've done. Uh, they play great defense. Their defensive front is uh, as good as we played. It reminds me of uh, uh, Texas A&M. I think they're outstanding. They're 10th uh, in the nation in overall defense. They're uh, 35th in scoring. Um, they stop the run. They're averaging uh, less than 100 yards a game. They stop in the pass, 23rd in passing. Uh, great on third down. They get off the field. And uh, you know, on offense, they're uh, they're going to control the ball. That's a run-first organization with great play-action pass. I think the offensive line is extremely physical. Uh, they've got a mentality about running the football. I think uh, the backs are outstanding. Uh, overall, I think it is a super well-coached football team, and we're going to have to play our very best game uh, to uh, give ourselves a chance. Uh, I think uh, this week is going to be. Um, the prep work has got to be on point. Uh, you're not going to get the ball as much as you normally would just because of how they control the ball on uh, offense. So uh, every snap is going to matter, and uh, it's going to be a, a great game. The weather is going to be perfect. Um, we need to have a, a, uh, a full stadium, and uh, this is going to be a, a great heavyweight fight, in my opinion. Uh, Coach, obviously Connor's been playing really well this season. Uh, it seems to be making you know the right decisions and, and reads, even like the handoff to Fannin there at the end of the game. I guess just how have you seen him improve in the decision-making factor, even from last year where he ended the season on a good note? Yeah, I think uh, he's done a uh, wonderful job in the off-season off making sure that he knows the offense like the coaches. Uh, anytime that you have a that type of feel for the system, um, you're going to you're going to play well. And, and traditionally, in this system, everyone plays better in year two, and then in year three, you normally dominate. He's an older guy, so he's playing at a very very high level right now in year two. Um, I think his body position has changed so much. I think his uh, uh, footwork is is dead on. He's throwing on rhythm, throwing on time. Uh, taking the right drops, right body position, weaving through progressions, getting the ball to the check down, taking shots when they're there, and uh, protecting the ball. And uh, he's, uh, you know, he's an older guy that's played a lot of football, and we got to do a better job protecting him this week. This uh, this front is excellent, and uh, they hit the quarterback, and uh, they play great team defense, in my opinion. So we've got to do a great job of protecting the passer a great job of establishing the run game and uh, be really balanced. Uh, you go one way or the other with these guys, you get in trouble real quick. If you think you're just going to line up and run the ball at them every snap, you're not going to do that. If you think that you're going to drop back every snap, um, you're not going to do that either because of the, I think they have a relentless pass rush. So I think this is a uh, an excellent uh, Northern Illinois team. And watching the tape, you know, you always, when you watch those uh, upsets in the MAC, yeah, you sometimes feel like uh, it was a fluke. This was no fluke. They physically played better than Notre Dame inside and out on all three phases, in my opinion. Um, so we're going to have our work cut out for us. I think they're just like I said, I think Thomas has done a great job. I think they're well coached. And just like I said, I think this is going to be a, a, a big time heavyweight fight. Um, third down conversions for you guys uh, has been huge this year. I think 46% converting it significantly higher. You know, you guys yeah. are able to sustain those long drives. How big of a factor has, has that aspect been, you know, converting third downs, even fourth downs, and obviously going up against Northern Illinois? Yeah, I, I think our third down we would be a top 10 in the country if, uh, if we didn't play Texas A&M. We did a great job on third down week one against uh, – Fordham, week two against Penn State. Week three, we did not. Uh, week four, we did an unbelievable job against ODU on third down and did an excellent job uh, on uh, against Akron. 
and a lot of the plays against Akron were uh, Connor extending the play uh, and, and made some really big plays. Uh, there's, um, um, I think our protection has been much better than what it's been in the past. Um, I think our receivers are getting better from week to week, and uh, we've got a, a good tight end, a really good tight end. Uh, just looking at Northern Illinois, obviously, you know, in the same uh, pod as you, so you guys will be facing them every year along with Toledo. Um, a lot of good battles between the two programs, especially the decade ago in the MAC championship mm -hmm. game. How much can kind of this this start, you know, kind of not only renew a rivalry, but really kind of strengthen that with Northern Illinois? Yeah, just like I said, um, you know, I've, I've watched that program over the last four years, five years. I think Thomas came in right around the same time I did, and I've just watched it develop. And uh, he's done it the right way in terms of it was all about uh, getting the, right, the fronts right, uh, in which he did. And, uh, you know, his philosophy is really, really simple. We're going to line up, and it's going to be inside drill all game long. Uh, we're going we're gonna to violate your eyes with play action pass. We're going to run the ball. We're not afraid to go for it on fourth down. We're going to be a ball hog team. And then we're going to build a, a defense that I think is uh, as good a defense as there is in this conference. And, um, you know, the front is excellent. Uh, the back end, I think, is very, very good. The linebackers play hard. And uh, I, think, uh, I think they're very, very well coached in all three phases. Um, obviously, C.J. Brown had a great, you know, career at Northern mm -hmm. Illinois. He's really off to a good start with you guys here. You know, what has his presence been like for this defense and this team this year? Yeah, I think he's a, a veteran guy, very similar to Connor, that's played a lot of football, and um, he's playing at a high level. He tackles well, so um, I'm I'm happy with how C.J.'s been playing. Coach, uh, it's my understanding this week is Student Athlete Mental Health Week and that some of the guys are getting involved with the Start a Conversation initiative. Can you tell me about some of the stuff that the guys are getting involved uh, this week to be able to contribute to that initiative? Yeah, I think uh, our guys do a great job with, uh, uh, in terms of respecting and trying to help others that are struggling with mental health. I know Malcolm's involved with his own program. Um, it's a hot topic, you know, it's, uh, and it's a real topic. You know, it's just not a hot topic. It, it's, there's some real things going on. And unfortunately, I think uh, COVID, along with a few other things that are going on in society, has really caused a lot of uh, heartache and a lot of stress on people. So anytime that uh, our guys can get involved with, uh, um, number one, recognizing it, and number two, helping others, I think that's great. So. Um, yeah, it's it's a it's a real deal right now. I mean, it's some of the th things that these kids have to deal with in comparison to how I grew up and how our coaches grew up. It's night and day. And uh, every single time that you pick up your phone, um, there's a like, there's a dislike, there's a comment. And uh, all we had to do was worry about going outside and playing really hard and having fun with our our, our friends. Uh, go home, play all day, get up, go to school play sports and worry about three three news outlets, you know, if you're worth a damn. And then when you went to even to the highest level that I was at, you know, ESPN was really just started. I mean, ESPN was the only thing and you might have had to deal with, uh, you know, the local uh, and the state newspaper. So it's a total different world what these guys are living in. And it's, uh, there's a reason right now that college football is challenging. And that's one of the reasons, in my opinion. There's a lot of things going on right now. But, uh, you know, the, the social media piece, the mental health piece, there's a lot, of guy, a lot of things on these guys' plates right now. Just at this point in the season and now that you're going up against the best rushing team in the MAC, I guess what's the level of concern with the run defense at this point? What needs to, I guess, what really needs to happen to them? Yeah, it was, uh, if you really assess the Akron game, um, I want to say the majority of their their offense came out of like seven plays, and uh, um, it's the first time ever that I think we've won the game and lost the explosion battle. We lost the explosion battle in that football game, and then on top of uh, giving them a free seven points at the beginning of the game, that's uh, 
that's tough to overcome on the road, and that's tough, tough to overcome even at home. Uh, the games are too close. Things are too close. Parity is across the board. Um, mentality is different. I hate to say that at times, week to week. So, you know, we've got to play. We've got to be so emotionally invested in this next game, um, along with the, the, the next seven. But uh, this one in particular, this is going to be a, uh, a hard nose, um, bully ball. Um, there's nowhere to hide in this one at all. And uh, that's, uh, it's going to be a great challenge for both teams, in my opinion. Coach, any update on uh, Terry on status? How's he doing? He should play in this game. I was disappointed that he didn't play in the Akron game, to be quite honest with you. Um, um, everything uh, at the beginning of the week, there was an indication that um, he should have played, uh, ended up not working out that way. But uh, I was disappointed he, he, he didn't play last week. But um, uh, hopefully um, he has a great week of practice and uh, you know we can get him in the fold, which will definitely help in the run game, you know, for sure. And I'm not discrediting it at all. Like, uh, Jason Patterson and um, uh, JJ have been playing lights out football, selfless football. If you go back and, uh, you know, everyone talks about the uh, first kickoff of the year with Jason, just go back, go look at play number one. Go walk, watch play number one when we were in the coming out, when we hit uh, um, Harold on the F line screen. And Jason Patterson takes the fake. He then gets in phase and was the lead blocker on the play. Just go watch that. And uh, in my opinion, you know, as coaches, you know, we appreciate the guys that really, really play well without the ball in their hands. And uh, he's a guy that's playing well with the ball in his hands. He's catching the football exceptional. Um, but it's no shock, though. This guy comes to work uh, every day. He works his tail off. He never complains. Um, he might be uh, nicked, uh, nicked up a bit and uh, finds a way to practice, is always on top of his stuff, uh, has very, very minimal mistakes week in and week out. And uh, so it's not a shock that he's playing well. When you're doing those things and having great habits day in and day out, and we got some guys that are doing that on our team, and we got some guys that uh, – that need to step up to that level, in my opinion, and we've all got to be on point this week. This is a uh, this is a championship type of team that we're facing, and uh, you got to be able to stop the run. Um, you got to win the turnover battle for sure. Um, they're gonna. It, it feels like you're playing an option team. You know, they're gonna hold on to the ball, and then they play great defense. So somehow you got to find a way to hold on to it. So um, this is a big challenge. This is a big challenge. This game could be over in two hours and 15 minutes. I mean, that's it's one of those type of games. For you to perform well. Yeah, I think it, I've just tried to um, think about just doing my job, not trying to do anything special out on the field. Just I, I know Coach Leffler always talks about just going from one to two to three, four, uh, and hitting, thrown to the first open guy I see. So. Uh, that's that's what I've tried to do, and then um, off schedule wise, when things break down, then I'm making plays, letting my talent take over, and um, I think I'm doing a, a good job of of that. When we've seen so much drop eight stuff the past two weeks, so yeah. Um, kind of take us through uh, what you saw on, you know, Fannin's game-winning touchdown run. I think you had a couple options. Uh, I think I, you had Jason in the backfield. I don't know if he was an option, but um, just kind of take us through what you saw and what, you know, led you to just yeah. hand it off to Harold there. Yeah, it was just um, – it was either to Harold or Malcolm, and it was just based off of numbers. So it was even, and when in doubt, give the ball to Harold. So – that's, I shouldn't have to say anything more. <laughs> right. right. Um, you know, um, the BG and Northern Illinois um, have had some really good battles over the years. The MAC championship a decade ago, they played three straight years. Um, now that, you know, they're in the same pod together with Toledo, so they'll be playing each other every year. How much can this rivalry kind of kind of grow and, and renew, renew and kind of grow uh, in the coming years here? Yeah, they've always... Uh, been a been a really good team. Um, 
they're a great team this year, and uh, I think playing them is awesome. Just um, it's another MAC team that I've haven't that we didn't play last year. I haven't played, so um, it should be a fun game, and I'm excited for it. Um, CJ obviously, CJ Brown obviously yeah. had a good career at NIU. He's been pretty impactful here so far. Mm -hmm. You know, what's what has his presence been like? How much has he kind of helped the defense? And uh, what's it like kind of going up against him in practice? Yeah, he's a great player, uh, great person, great leader. Uh, I know he's really excited for this game. Obviously, uh, playing against his former teammates and coaches, and um, so he, he's fired up for this game and. You know, I think offensively, defensively, as as a whole, we're we're we know this is a big one, and uh, we just got to take it day by day. It all starts with having great practice tomorrow, great practice Wednesday, uh, great preparation to give ourselves a chance to to play well on Saturday. Connor, Coach talked about it really clicks for guys in year two in this system. Do you feel like it's really clicked for you in year two? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I think it was more so at the end of last year. Um, I, I wouldn't necessarily say it clicked. It was just like, like I finally, um, I think I've talked about it before. It's just like not having to think out there, just just going out there, trying to have fun, playing freely. Uh, trusting in my teammates, and I think some of my past some of my past experiences at, at other schools kind of kind of carried over into the start of last year, and um, got those things sorted out. Um, and then I feel like I started to play really well uh, at the end of last year, and then I, I feel like I'm playing at a pretty high level right now. So. Um, like I said, I'm just trying to do my job out there, do what the do what the coaches ask me to do, not try to do anything special, and uh, trust that that'll be good enough for us to win. It's critical when you look at that stat, like third down conversion. It really should they should really have every like third third and short, third third medium, third and long, because it's all about first and second down. It, getting yourself in a manageable third down position. If you're in third and eight, nine, ten plus the whole game, you got no shot. Um, so it's, it's really all about first, second down. But uh, all off season, we emphasized third down. We, we knew we, we weren't as good as we wanted to be in that, in that uh, stat last year. So we focused a bunch on it in training camp in the off season. So we've put the coaches have, have, have done a great job game planning for, for third downs and uh, putting us in, in positions to succeed. And it's also, it's also nice when I feel healthy out there, I can extend plays and try to find guys uh, scrambling. So. Good. Good. Sure. All right. Questions? Uh, is CJ obviously facing your former team this week. Mm -hmm. What do you think the emotions are going to be like for you on Saturday when you when you uh, face former team? Um, I think I'm going to pretty pretty much treat it like a normal game because um, obviously we're at home too, so it's not going to get the real feel of being back in the cow. But treat it like a regular game, treat it like um, similar opponents, and I think it'll be. I, I'm going to know a lot more. Obviously, going into this game is going to feel different preparing, but when we go into the field, it's going to be normal football. Right. And, uh, you know, obviously you had a lot of success at NIU, obviously mm -hmm. two-time All-Mac. You guys won a MAC title there. You know, what did what did your time, you know, there mean to you? Uh, it meant a lot. Obviously, like you said, we won championships, and we were kind of in a rebuilding phase, too, when I was there. Um, had a lot of good weapons and whatnot, but it was it was a good time there, graduated all the matter, so, yep. Um, obviously, you've been able to step right in here and make mm -hmm. a huge impact. I think leading the team in tackles. You know, what's the transition been like for you, and, and to just step onto the field right away and really contribute uh, so far? It's been pretty smooth. Being an older guy, I know what it takes. Um, I obviously go out there and play some good football. It just took more time spending time with the coaches, spending time with the players, um, gelling, and being with them so we can be the best we can be. That means like extra film room, extra studying and whatnot. So it's been a pretty smooth transition. 
uh, BG and NIU are, are going to be facing each other every year now with this mm -hmm. pod system. Um, obviously, they've had some great battles in the past, like the MAC championship games about a decade ago. Um, just, I guess, how meaningful will it be just to have this rivalry kind of renewed a little bit and then just going forward for it to kind of grow, obviously, between uh, two pretty good programs? I think it'll be pretty well, for, especially for the MAC. Um, like you said, back in 03, they were competitive against each other when college game day was here. And then like a decade ago, um, a couple of MAC titles, I'm pretty sure, was they might have passed, passed the ball by like four or five times in the second half. So that aspect, the run's pretty similar. So I can shed light to the guys and whatnot and give them some tips that I know. But as far as personnel-wise, yeah, like I know what they're going to do because I've played with the majority of the players for a little bit. So it'll be good, yeah.